How on earth did cavemen go from soil, water and rocks to Bluetooth, iPhones and ranked jerkmate? The answer is the transistor. Transistors are the most important invention humanity has been able to cook up, but you don't even know how to use them and take control of all of this power. I'll change that in this video by giving you everything you need to know to harness the power of the transistor and build a whole computer like this one from these basic switches. In this video, I'll take you through the three levels you'll have to complete before you try to slay the colossal task that is building a whole CPU. First, I'll show you some circuit basics. Then I'll show you how we go from switches to logic. And finally, the fun stuff. Putting what we've learned into an actual circuit we'll use in the old 2Hz CPU. Now these are called breadboards. Here's where we're gonna make all our connections. I've linked these exact breadboards down in the description if you want to follow along. Breadboards are great because you can easily plug and play around with your connections. For example, say you accidentally put something on backwards, it's as easy as just picking it up, twisting it and putting it back down. And this is really helpful, especially for a big circuit like what we're going to build. You're bound to make mistakes, so having an easy way to adjust your circuits quickly is going to be very useful. If you look inside the breadboard, you'll find these little metal clamps arranged in rows going all the way down. These are what we make the connections to. And and since this is metal, it allows us to connect two conductors together, basically creating an extension of a wire. So if I connect these two wires to the same internal clamp, they are now connected together. Now along the length of the board, you'll find these longer lines. These are called power rails. These allow us to spread the power across the board. And we need them because the circuit needs power to work. I'm using this cell phone charger to provide the power to the board. It's actually a cut-up mouse, but both would work. Just don't use a laptop charger. Now you never want to connect anything directly to power. That's just going to fry all your components. We need to add a resistor which will safely give the power to the rest of our components. Now I'll hook up an LED here, making sure the longer leg is connected to the resistor. And we want to complete the circuit by giving it a path to ground. And that's all you need to know for the circuit basics. Okay, so let's do something a bit more interesting. Let's add some switches into the mix. Now switches are great because they allow us to control the output of the circuit. So instead of having a clear path from power to ground, you want to break that path here, add a switch, and then connect the LED to ground. Now we can control when we want the LED to be on. We don't have to stop at one switch. If you add another switch back to back, then the LED won't turn on unless switch A and switch B are on. And if you arrange the switches like this, then the LED will turn on if switch A or switch B is on, or both. Now since we're on this topic of control, there's one more concept you'll need to understand. The LED is on right now, but if I connect the wire from plus 5 volts, and I connect that directly to ground, then the LED turns off. This is also a form of control, but controlling when we want it to be off. Now, like I said before, we never want to have a clear path from plus five volts to ground. This will always, almost always damage your circuits. So we have to connect that right after this resistor and then connect that to ground. So if you use the same concept, take this line, put a switch here, and then give that a path to ground we now control when we want the light to be off. Now remember the AND circuit we built before? We can still use that switch arrangement here. And last time we had to press both buttons to turn the light on, but this time we have to press both buttons to turn the light off. So it's an inverted circuit, it's the opposite of the previous circuit we built. We can do the same for the OR circuit. In the last circuit we had to press either button to turn the LED on. This time we press either button to turn the LED off. And this is the inverted OR circuit. Now that you know how to use switches, you're ready for transistors. But if you're following along with the build, there's one thing you'll need to be aware of. I've cut out a lot of the fiddling I had to do with the circuitry. And I had to do all these adjustments because breadboard connections are flimsy. For more reliable connections, we're going to need the help of our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is the home of high quality PCBs. And that's why they're doing all of our PCB work. And since everyone loved the purple solder mask from last month, they're bringing it back. So you can get purple solder mask at no extra cost. You already know we're taking full advantage of their kindness here. What, you give a guy free purple solder mask and expect him not to take it? Head on over to PCB Way this month for a whole load of discounts. And massive savings on TPU prints. Thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the video. Now let's talk about transistors. A transistor works the exact same way a switch would. Instead of requiring a physical force to activate the switch, now you just need an electrical signal. But hold on a minute, just because it's the same idea doesn't mean it's going to work the same for the transistors and the switches. Let me show you what I mean. So let's think about how you wired up the AND gate last time. 
we have two switches back to back. The first input goes to power, and then the output of the first switch goes to the input of the next switch, and then the output of the next switch goes to ground. And this does what we want. We want both of the switches to be pressed for the light to turn on. Let's see if that works if I use the transistors the same way. You can think of the middle pin as the button we press for these transistors. This right side goes to power, and the left side goes to ground. So here we have a path from power to the first input, then the output of the first to the input of the second second and then the output of the second to ground. Now you want the circuit to turn the LED on if both of the switches are pressed. If we press this switch, the LED is off. That's good. If we press the next switch, it turns on. This is not what we want. Why does this happen? Don't ask too many questions, buddy. This is not a homework assignment. You just have to internalize that this does not work correctly. So what we have to do here is start off by building the inverted AND gate. Do you remember what we did? We had our LED and our LED had a clear path to ground. Now we'll still make the same AND arrangement and then also giving that a clear path to ground. Now the next thing we do, we take the power from the same resistor and connect it up to our collector. Let's connect up our inputs and see if this works. When you press one of the buttons, it stays on. If you press the other button, it stays on. But if you press both, it turns off. This works perfectly for our inverted AND. What's cool is if you connect up LEDs like this, with the positive lead connecting to the output of the switch and the negative leg connecting to the transistor input, you can actually see the input values going into the transistors. If switch one is on, the LED stays on. Switch two is on, the LED stays on. But if both are on, then the LED turns off. We still wanna be able to make the AND gate, right? Yes, we do. And here's why these transistors are so powerful. Since this is the opposite of the AND gate, we can just use one switch to make another opposite of this circuit. So we use the same idea. Give it power, give it a path to ground, and then connect its input to the output of the NAND gate. And it works perfectly. So as promised, let's build a circuit that we'll actually use on the CPU. So we're going to build this circuit on the breadboard. Now you should never think about this at the transistor level. Always think about it at the logic gate level. So here we have an AND gate and a NOR gate. We switched over to the Android, so the quality is noticeably worse, unfortunately. I hate when niggas try to shit on Apple for having, you know, a bad phone and then they're just going to start glazing Samsung. Samsung and Android will just never be on the same level as an iPhone. It's the sad truth. So this is the switch arrangement for the NAND. And then we invert that to get the AND. And then this is the first NOR gate. Now every gate needs power. So we're going to give power to the NAND first. Then power to the NOT then power to the NOR. Then we're also gonna have to give each of the gates a path to ground. So we have one for the NAND, one for the NOR, and one for this NOT gate. And what you wanna do is test if the gates are working before you create more gates. So I've connected this LED up to the output of the NAND gate. I'm just gonna bridge the power rails here to make sure both sides of the breadboard are getting power. Then we'll connect our charger to the circuit and let's connect some inputs, see if it's working. Now this should stay on until these two switches are pressed. So if this is pressed, it's still on. If this is pressed, it's still on. But then if both are pressed, it should turn off. So the NAND gate is working perfectly. So what we can do is just take the output of our NAND gate. And by output, I mean the rightmost leg of the transistor. And now we can test if this AND gate is working perfectly using the same idea. So it should only turn on if both of these buttons are pressed. It stays off, still off, and it should turn on now, and it does. So our AND gate is working. Now let's test our NOR gate. It should stay on until any one of the buttons are pressed. So if I press this, it turns off. If I press this, it turns off. And both, it stays off. So this first part of our circuit works perfectly. But look here, look at the inputs. A and B, we're sharing the inputs to both of these logic gates. To make sure both logic gates are getting a fair share of the juice flowing in, you need to put resistors here at the inputs of the transistors. So I'll do that right now. Again, the inputs are the middle pins on our transistors. And I'll do the same for our NOR gate. Now we can connect these inputs together. And after connecting up these inputs like this, we can now control both of these logic gates at the same time. I'll hook up these LEDs again so you can see what I mean. And I'll connect up the inputs. So now pressing these buttons controls the NOR gate. And if I press both, 
It also controls the AND gate. So we're done with this first part of the circuit. Now the output of the first NOR gate goes into a second NOR gate. So let's wire up the second NOR gate. Again, we need power, we need a path to ground, and we need to test if it works. So you want the output of the NOR to go right into the input of the next NOR, and we'll do that just like this. Now the second input comes from this AND gate, and if you look at this AND gate, we're sharing its output to two inputs. So we also need resistors here. So we're gonna need a resistor for this NOR gate. Don't worry about this resistor being a bit smaller than the others. These are all 2.2K ohm resistors. And the input that should go through this resistor is from this AND gate. And we can test the overall circuit, again, using an LED. This circuit is actually an XOR gate. So we want this to be on if either one of the buttons are on but not on if both of the buttons are pressed. So if this button's pressed, it's on. If the other button's pressed, it's on. But if both are pressed, it's off. So it works perfectly. Now we move on to the next part. Notice that this is just gonna be a copy of what we've just done. So I'll just repeat what we just did. Man, rest in peace to my nigga Danya, bruh. If this isn't proof that there is no God, I don't know what else to tell you, bro. I just don't understand why you take Danya and leave niggas like, I don't know, Netanyahu out there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not praying for anything bad to happen to Netanyahu, I'm just saying. You seen what that nigga did? <laughs> He's gonna say, oh, no, we're, we're having a ceasefire, you know, we're not gonna shoot you niggas anymore. You can just gather up back in Gaza, go back home. And after he makes sure that everyone's gathered up, then he's gonna blow him up. He's gonna lie and say, oh, these Hamas niggas, they shot at our people. No evidence, nothing. And then he's just gonna blow the niggas up in, in Gaza, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not on the I'm not on the Hamas side either. You know, I have no no horses in this race. But come on, bruh. This nigga Netanyahu was moving crazy. Them Hamas niggas is not good guys either, bruh. You saw them doming niggas in the streets and stuff, man. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh, I know a lot of Palestinian niggas, you know, I know the culture. I know nothing about Palestine. I know nothing about Israel. But hey, my opinion's very easily swayed. Netanyahu, hit me up. Put some M's in my bank account. And, you know, Israel is suddenly the best country in the world. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'm rambling. Rest in peace to Danya, man. We're gonna have to switch up our whole repertoire now. I'm gonna start playing the Joe Bava London and start learning this nigga's theory. But yeah, man, rest in peace, Danya. You will be missed. And this is the completed circuit. And these are the outputs. If we have 0 plus 0 plus 1, then we have a 1 on the output. The 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 2, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And this works perfectly, and it will work perfectly every time. One final tip, say you want to see the inputs going into the adder. You know, how do you make sure that the button is a 1? How do you make sure that the button is pressed? You can use LEDs for that. Say for example, you want to see the output of this switch. You can take the output of the button and just hook up an LED between the button and the wire that's going into the circuit. But you do have to make sure that this wire is going into the input of a transistor that is connected to ground. I'll show you what I mean. So I've now removed the rest of the circuitry that we don't need and I've hooked up this NAND gate. Now we want to see these inputs going in. If we use the same technique with the LEDs, if I press this button, it works fine. You can see the input going in. But if I press this button, it's a lot dimmer than the other one and it's much harder to see in person. The reason for this is because it's connected to, to this transistor, which doesn't have a clear path to ground. If I press both at the same time, this issue is solved because now they both have a clear path to ground as the circuit is completed. This is an issue you'll only encounter with AND gates. And that is all you need to start building. It truly is. It's not complicated at all. So buy a few transistors with the link in the description, a few breadboards with the link in the description, and you know, start messing around. Have fun with them.